Thank you, Andre. This is Chris Laird, and I'll be continuing the discussion of the qualitative and quantitative analysis of Generation 4 nuclear reactors. Listed here are the references that cover this presentation. In this presentation, I'll cover two reactor designs, the sodium-cooled fast reactor and the very high temperature gas reactor. We'll cover the technology origin, the operation of each of these two reactors, and the advantages and disadvantages or challenges that each of these reactors face. Sodium-cooled fast reactor concept generated from sodium-cooled technology from the mid-1990s. Development of this technology is still underway in France and Japan. The basis of this technology has been established in other fast reactor programs, including end-of-life tests in France, the BN600 in Russia, and the testing of the Manju nuclear plant in Japan. Near-term deployment designs are in development in France, Japan, and Russia. Additionally, China, Korea, and India are moving forward with SFR concepts. This Generation 4 design is the most developed of the six reactor designs under discussion. All concepts rely on the non-utilization of a neutron moderator, therefore the energy spectrum utilized is fast via thermal. By utilizing this particular energy spectrum, breeding or transmutation of transuranic isotopes can occur. Research and development of the fuel selection is necessary between the aqueous process and the pyrometallurgical process. However, both have the goals of recovery and recycling of almost 100% of actinides, creating a highly radioactive product, and never separating plutonium at any stage. <clears throat> in terms of modular design, the Power Reactor Innovative Small Module, or PRISM, is a technology that, along with Nuclear Fuel Recycling Center, produces electricity from recycled used nuclear fuel. Power blocks are then created by pairing prisms to produce a higher net output. In the pool design, the core, shown here as items 1 and 2, is immersed in the sodium-filled vessel. Temperature of the core inlet is approximately 400 degrees centigrade and averages 550 degrees centigrade at the outlet. Hot sodium primary flows into the intermediate exchanger, shown as item 10, transferring heat into the sodium-filled secondary. Item 4, the primary pump, returns the primary sodium to the core, which is also submerged in the vessel. Secondary system transfers heat to a tertiary system, which in this case is a steam generator, shown as item 13. And high quality steam greater than 500 degrees centigrade allows for an overall efficiency of greater than 40%. Item 7, which is a safety vessel, is provided as a measure to contain leakage or main vessel failure. The pool design is most widely used and currently only Japan is developing the loop concept. As you can see here, the notable difference is how the core is isolated in the main vessel and connected by loops to the other major components. The advantages of this sodium-cooled fast reactor include the fact that about 20 prototypes and demonstrators have been constructed throughout the world. The 400 reactor years of experience include the French Phoenix reactor, which operated for more than 35 years and became a wealth of knowledge for the design. The high outlet temperature discussed earlier allows for greater thermal efficiency, as mentioned, greater than 40%. The experience, along with the mature technology, allows for near-term deployability for actinide management while also aiming to be economically competitive in the electricity market. With a low pressure and intermediate cooling system, there is no loss of coolant accident concern. There's minimum pressure on the coolant boundary, therefore leaks and piping breaks are also less likely. There's no need for a high pressure emergency injection system. The guard vessel provides additional protection for the sodium primary inventory. Sodium has also been described as the dominant fast reactor coolant as it's approximately 100 times more effective at heat transfer and provides a much larger margin to boiling. 400 degrees centigrade compared to 15 degrees centigrade in a pressurized water reactor. The design of the process also allows for long core lives by utilizing the concept of breed and burn. While the high outlet temperature allows for greater efficiency, temperature of 500 degrees centigrade, operating temperatures that high present a concern for materials. Fast cores are not in their most reactive configurations, therefore we must ensure that recriticality doesn't occur. The fast neutron spectrum also prevents a shielding challenge, and with the potential for sodium reactions, the system must be maintained leak tight. Sodium clarity could also affect inspections and maintenance on particular pieces of equipment. Gas-cooled reactors have been researched since early in nuclear power history. Early models were commercially used in the UK but overshadowed by other designs such as the light water reactors. Much of the international interest was in development 
the not deployment. There are many high temperature gas cooled reactors constructed as prototypes and demonstration plants. Interest in this technology has resurfaced and many HTGR designs, the generation 3 plus reactors, have been developed for near term deployment. Because of this, a lot of the design is based on those existing near term designs. The operation of the very high temperature gas reactor is based on a Brayton cycle versus a Rain Keen cycle. The basis of this cycle is that the working fluid is always a single phase gas. In a direct cycle, the gas would be heated through the reactor, whereas in the indirect cycle, the gas in a primary loop would transfer heat to a secondary gas through a heat exchanger. The fuel assembly for the final design may come in two categories, the pebble bed and the prismatic block. In the prismatic block, the fuel core is surrounded by a graphite reflector. The pebble bed core utilizes fuel spheres that cycle through the core. The VHTR is being designed currently upon the triple isotropic coated fuel particle, or TRISO. These are dispersed to form the fuel elements in one of the designs discussed previously. Each one of these fuel particles is essentially its own pressure vessel with the ability to rain, retain fission products. VHTR is also designed to produce hydrogen in a secondary loop. Moving on to the flow path, the primary loop will utilize a closed direct Brayton cycle for electricity production. Cool helium flows into the bottom of the reactor through the cross duct between the reactor and the power conversion unit. Helium then flows up the inner wall of the core and through the reactor coolant channels. Hot helium flows out through the inner piping of the cross duct and into the power conversion unit. The portion of the helium is diverted to an intermediate heat exchanger to heat the secondary loop. The secondary loop provides heat for non-electrical energy such as the production of hydrogen. Shown here is also a tertiary heat exchanger which provides an additional isolation between the reactor and the hydrogen loops. This loop may or may not exist in the final design due to cost and a desire for simplification. The high temperatures in this design allow for higher thermal efficiencies, reportedly greater than 50%, and thus creating more electrical output per fuel unit. The helium coolant, graphite moderator, and triso fuel give this reactor a strong negative temperature coefficient of reactivity. The use of helium as a coolant is a safety feature as well. Helium is chemically inert, does not undergo a phase change at or above reactor temperatures. Because of the triso fuel, the pressure vessel also does not need to be leaked tight as traditional light, light water reactors. Triso fuel also lends to pro proliferation resistance as it is very difficult to reprocess. Hydrogen production is an additional advantage. In one design, a VHTR could produce 2 million cubic meters of hydrogen per day which is equivalent to more than 160,000 gallons of gasoline. VHTR will, however, use fuel at about three to four times the burn-up of light water reactors. This will expose core materials to higher lifetime radiation exposure. Corrosion processes are also expected to happen more quickly, and with these factors, along with the higher temperatures, further research is required for material development in both the reactor and the cooling components. Additionally, VHTR design will require further research investment in high pressure turbines. Make sure that to utilize the indirect Brayton cycle for hydrogen production, an intermediate heat exchanger is used. Because of the low heat transfer properties of helium, normal tube and shell heat exchangers would be too large to construct. Current designs that could be used in this case still need to be researched for reactor applications. And finally, the hydrogen plant constructed must be maintained leak tight to prevent potential combustion. Hydrogen product also runs the risk of contamination from potential diffusion of tritium that's formed in the reactor core from impurities that may exist in the helium coolant that end up diffusing through the metal. Continuing our discussion of the generation four reactors will be Giancarlo Tagliaferri. He'll be covering the lead cooled fast reactor and the molten salt fast reactor.